Hello, everybody. Um, if you're a part of Freedom Church, you might remember that around this time last year, I shared a message about the significance of this week that leads us up to Easter Sunday, the day that we celebrate, the day that is significant through history, the day that marks our faith and the day that personally has changed so many of our lives. And um, I just shared a message that pulled out one significant thing that happened each day through that week that would lead up to this moment that changed the world forever. And I was chatting to some friends this week and um, talking about the benefit of just reflecting properly, preparing properly to go into Easter weekend. And so I thought I would make another one of these little Bible studies so that you can just take five minutes each day and reflect on some of these moments, some of these uh hints and promises that we see through Christ's actions that we can actually take a comfort in, but also respond to. And I was just explaining that I think each one of these is an invitation. Um, we're invited to partake of this journey in some way. And so I wanted to just break these down into a couple of five minute videos. You can view them all in one go, or you can do it day by day and actually kind of take a step by step journey up to next Sunday and its significance. But let's kick off with Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the Sunday before Easter Sunday. It's the day that Jesus arrived, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And it doesn't seem like it should be a triumph. You know, if you consider what it is that Jesus is doing, he's riding towards the place of his death. He's riding towards the place that he knows is going to hold incredible uh, physical pain, but also mockery, doubt, hatred. Um, he knows that there are there's such significant challenge ahead for him. And yet it's written in my Bible as the triumphal entry. And I think that's such interesting wording. Why is it triumphal? How is there triumph in this moment? But I'm reminded that all the way through Jesus' ministry, he really encourages his disciples to keep quiet about who he is. He doesn't really want people to go shouting about the fact that he's the Messiah because he knows his time hasn't come yet. His time for full exposure, full revelation hasn't arrived yet. It's actually all those years of ministry have been leading up to this moment. And that's why this is a triumph, because finally it's public. Finally, the news is out. Jesus rides into Jerusalem saying, I am the Messiah. And in doing so, he does, you know, all of these things that fulfill various prophetic words that have gone hundreds of years before. But he, he rides in and says, the time is now. It is me and I'm about to change everything. And the triumph in that challenging approach is so powerful. It, the triumph in that declaration of saying it's time, it's the day has come is amazing. But he doesn't ride in with pride. He doesn't ride in with, a, you know, a massive entourage or, a, you know, a big declaration of power, even though it's such a powerful moment. He comes in with this sense of immense humility. He rides into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. You know, kings in these days, they would have ridden to battle on a horse they would have ridden on like this posture of power and triumph on a horse that kind of makes a statement to say, I'm in business, I'm here to win. But kings riding towards peace would ride, ride on a donkey. And here's Jesus, not the king that everybody was expecting the prophetic fulfillment to be, not a warrior, not a politician even, but a carpenter's son riding in on a donkey. And it's so significant that he enters Jerusalem on this day because people were flooding to Jerusalem. People would have been flooding to the temple to make their sacrifices for the Passover. They would have been getting together to uh, recognize the significant time of Passover, a time where they remembered the deliverance of their ancestors, a time where God took them from slavery to freedom. Such a significant moment in the Jewish calendar. And they would have been arriving with their sacrificial lambs because Jewish custom was that you don't just go out and find a lamb on Passover day. You actually have to keep it within your family for a number of days before the sacrifice. And all of these families would be arriving with their lambs. And here comes Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, at exactly the same time, entering Jerusalem, ready to recognize this deliverance from slavery to freedom in a way that I don't think anybody is quite ready for. So there's an immense humility about him and an immense um, 
uh, surrender, submission to the will of God. But this is what it says. I'm going to read from Matthew 21 verses 7 to 11. It says, they bought the donkey, the disciples bought the donkey and colt and put on them their cloaks and sat on them. And he sat on them. I'm sorry. Jesus sat on them, on those cloaks. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks out on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them down on the road. And the crowds went before him and followed him and were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. In those few verses, there are so many prophetic fulfillments, so many things that would have marked as as signposts for Jewish people to say, oh, you know, we've heard about this. We've heard about the palm branches. We've heard about somebody coming in on a donkey. We've heard about, um, you know, this prophet that's going to fulfill something for us. And it's It's amazing how alongside all of this confirmation and all of this power is praise. I believe that the the thing that we are invited into on Palm Sunday is it's an invitation to praise. It's an invitation to praise God, to join with the crowds who've gone before us, to wave our palm branches and say, Hosanna to the King in the highest. We recognize you, Jesus. We see you for who you are. We thank you for what you're about to do for us. And we praise you. There's no one else who could win our freedom for us. It's only you. God, we thank you for what it is that you're doing. I think that this is an invitation to praise and that every one of us in anticipation of Easter Sunday to come can start praising Jesus right now for what it is that he has done and will do in our lives.